Let's take a look at a geometry problem where we're going to see how many of these little unit cubes we can fit in a right rectangular prism together. We're going to be taking these small cubes that have edge lengths that are one quarter inch each, which is shown right over here. And what we're trying to figure out here is how many of these little cubes can we fit inside of the right rectangular prism below. Here's that prism. So if we're taking a look at this right rectangular prism, we can go ahead and label this dimension the length. So we know the length here is going to be four and one half inches. We can label this dimension the width. And so that dimension is going to be five inches. And we can label this dimension the height. This dimension measures three and three fourths inches tall. Now to figure out how many of these smaller unit cubes are going to fit inside of this bigger right rectangular prism, I have two strategies that I'm going to go over. I'm going to call this first strategy the big volume divided by the small volume. If we can figure out the amount of space or volume this one little cube takes up, and we can figure out the amount of space or volume this big right rectangular prism takes up, if we divide those two volumes, the bigger one divided by the smaller one, we'll get how many cubes fit inside of this right rectangular prism. Knowing that this is a cube, we know the length is going to be a quarter of an inch, the width is going to be a quarter of an inch, and the height is also going to be a quarter inch. Now our formula for finding the volume of a prism is always going to be the area of the base multiplied by the height. In this case, the area of the base is going to be a square or a rectangle. So we can find the area of that by multiplying the length and width to find the area of the base, then we'll multiply it by the height. In this case, all of these dimensions happen to be the same because it's a cube. So we're going to have a quarter for the length multiplied by a quarter for the width multiplied by a quarter for the height. And so the volume of this little unit cube is going to be one times one times one on top, which is just one. And then we have four times four times four on the bottom, which is going to be 64. So the volume of one of these little cubes is going to be a 64th of a cubic inch. So this right here is the amount of 3D space or volume that one of these little cubes takes up. Now, what about the volume of this right rectangular prism? Well, we already know the length and the width and the height, and this is also a prism, so we can use the same formula of volume is equal to the area of the base multiplied by the height. In this case, we also have a right rectangular prism, so that means the base is going to be a rectangle. So we can say it's length times width to find the area. So we have length times width times height. So the length here is going to be four and a half. And if we go ahead and know we're going to multiply fractions, we should turn this into an improper fraction. So four and a half is the same thing as nine halves. We're going to go ahead and multiply that by the width of five, but as a fraction, five holes is just five over one. And then three and three fourths as an improper fraction is going to be 15 fourths. All right, now if we go ahead and multiply these fractions together on top, we have nine times five times 15. That's 45 times 15, which I believe is going to be 675. And then in the denominator, we have two times one times four, which is going to be two times four, which is equal to eight. While you can leave the volume of this in this improper fraction form, this would be 675 eighths cubic inches. You could also write this as a mixed number if you would like and say this would be 84 and 3 eighths cubic inches. Either of these would represent the volume or the amount of 3D space that this bigger right rectangular prism takes up. So we know the amount of space that one cube takes up is 1 64th cubic inch, and we know the total amount of space that the right rectangular prism takes up is 84 and 3 eighths cubic inches, or 675 eighths cubic inches. So if we want to figure out how many cubes fit inside, we just go ahead and divide these volumes. So let's go ahead and write this down. Since we know we're going to be dividing fractions, let's just go ahead and use the improper fraction version of the bigger prism volume uh, instead of the mixed number, right? So so for the bigger volume, let's go ahead and write 675 eighths. And then we can go ahead and write cubic inches if we want, but it's just going to cancel out when we divide. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. And we're going to divide this by the volume of the smaller unit cube, which is going to be 1 64th of a cubic inch. But again, I'm not going to write the units because they're going to cancel out when we divide. Now remember, when we are dividing fractions, we typically are going to just rewrite this as a multiplication problem. So we're going to multiply the 675 eighths by the reciprocal of 1 64th, which is just going to be 64 holes or 64 over 1. It's going to look just like this. So we can go ahead and multiply these fractions now. If we go to multiply, notice that this 8 and 64 can cross cancel. Uh, you can divide those both by 8, which is their greatest common factor. So 8 divided by 8 is going to be 1, and then 64 divided by 8 is going to be 8. So if we go ahead and multiply these two uh, together now, you're gonna see that in the numerator, we have 675, we're gonna multiply that by eight. We should end up with 5,400. And then in the denominator, we just get one. So 5,400 over one, we can go ahead and say that we should be able to fit 
5,400 of these cubes inside of that right rectangular prism? That'll be our answer. So well, that's one way you could solve this problem. Here's another way. For the second method, I'm gonna call this the number of cubes per dimension. So remember earlier we said that we knew what the length and the width and the height were going to be. That's this information right over here. So let's go ahead and take that information and use that down here. All right, so keeping the colors consistent here, we know the length and the width and the height of the right rectangular prism are four and a half, five and three and three fourths. But what about the dimensions of those little unit cubes? Remember we had the dimensions of that unit cube over here. So let's go ahead and use that information down here. And so for this strategy, we're gonna see how many of these one fourths will fit inside of four and a half, how many one fourths fit inside of five, and how many one fourths fit inside of three and three fourths. If we can figure out all those numbers and then multiply them together, that'll tell us how many little cubes that we're going to have. So looking at this visually, I think this will maybe help a little bit. We're really just seeing how many of these little cubes we can stack across this uh, prism, going across here, right? How many of those can fit across? Then we're seeing how many of these little cubes you can stack uh, going back in this depth dimension or going back in the width and then how many of these heights or how many of these cubes you can stack on top of each other right because if you can find out how many uh, layers of all of these uh, cubes you can fit in in each of these dimensions you can find the total number of cubes so let's do that first division here and see how many of these uh, one quarters just fits inside of four and a half and so going across the length here, if we want to see how many quarters will fit inside of four and a half, you can take this four and a half here and divide that by this one quarter. That'll tell us how many times it fits in. So four and a half we know is going to be nine over two. Let's go ahead and write nine over two. And then if we go ahead and multiply that by the reciprocal of one over four, that's going to be four over one. We can go ahead and cross cancel the two and the four by dividing them by their GCF of two. So that's going to be one and a two. And then if we go and multiply nine times two is gonna be 18. And then one times one is going to be one. So we know across the length here, we can fit 18 of these cubes. So we can fit here that we can say 18 cubes can fit across the length here. Moving on to the width, we know the width is going to be five inches. So five is just five over one. We're gonna see how many quarters fit inside of that. So we're gonna divide it by one fourth. So if we go ahead and divide here, same strategy, we're gonna take our first fraction of five as five over one, then multiply it by the reciprocal of one over four, that is going to be four over one. And hopefully this makes sense, but you can't cross cancel. And then five times four is going to be 20, one times one is one. So we know that we can fit 20 cubes in the width. So we can go ahead and say over here that we can fit 20 of these cubes. All right, finally for the height, we have three and three fourths. So that's gonna be how many inches tall. So we're gonna see how many cubes we can stack on top of each other. And we're gonna see how many of these little quarter inch cubes fit inside. So if we go ahead and divide these, well, three and three fourths as an improper fraction is going to be 15 fourths. And then we're gonna go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal of uh, one over four, which is four over one. You can see we have some nice cross canceling here because four and four have a GCF of four. So we can divide them both by four to get one and one. And then 15 times one is gonna be 15. One times one is going to be one. So we get 15 cubes can stack on top of each other all the way to the top of this prism. So we can have a height of 15 cubes total. So we just figured out that we can fit 18 cubes across the front here, and then we can stack uh, 20 rows going back this way. And then once we do that, we can stack 15 layers of these cubes going all the way to the top of this prism. So once we found out these numbers, all we have to do is multiply them together to get the total number of cubes. And so to find the total number of cubes, what we just said here is we're going to multiply 18 by 20. That'll tell us how many cubes are on that bottom layer of that right rectangular prism. And then we have 15 layers of that. So we would multiply by 15 levels. So if you take 18 and multiply it by 20, 18 times 20 means that you'd have a total of 360 of these little cubes going across the bottom. And then if you have 15 layers uh, being multiplied together, 360 on the bottom times 15 layers, we're gonna find out that that is going to be 5,400 of these cubes. And hopefully this makes sense because it matches what we got earlier. Both of these methods seem to check out and you get that we have 5,400 of these little unit cubes that fit inside of that right rectangular prism. 
fundamentally, these strategies are quite similar to each other. On the left side, what we did is we figured out how much 3D space fits inside of the 3D space. That's one way to do that. And you divide by seeing how many times something fits into it. And on the right side, what we did is we found out how much 1D space fits inside of each of these 1D dimensions. So it doesn't really matter how you decide to do it. If you want to break it down into doing one dimension at a time and then just multiplying those three 1D dimensions together or one dimensions together to get three dimensions, or you can go ahead and just find out the three dimensional values and then divide those. But either way, you're seeing how many times something smaller fits into something that is bigger. Now that you've checked out this video, hopefully you have a better understanding of how to tackle these types of problems. If you found the video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing with a classmate or friend who might also find it helpful. And as always, keep up the great work that you're already doing. Thank you.